Getting into the Genie X-Lite isn't as simple as I'd like. Yeah. Still testing the Gen Genie X-Lite. So what I'm gonna do now is a little bit of launching ground handling. Speaking of ground handling with the Genie X-Lite, quite a few ultralight harnesses are very, light, very, very narrow um, leg straps and they really bite into your bits. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the, the Genie X-Lite's got sort of quite narrow, but well, webbing straps, it's got webbing straps, so they're not lines, but they're relatively narrow webbing. So they do pinch a bit where they are goes right over your ghoulies. Um, but I think relatively speaking, it's not bad. It's not a harness, like all light, lighter harnesses, you shouldn't really spend a lot of time ground handling in them. But yeah, for now, for, for example, now that's pinching quite a bit. I don't really want to stay dangling like that all that long. And as I showed before, with the Genie x -Lite, I don't find it particularly easy to get my foot into. And I would definitely want to, uh, I would definitely fit a bungee on this harness. And then all I have to do is extend one foot out. And then it'll be easy to extend the bag and get my other foot onto the edge of the, to the foot plate to be able to get my foot in. And because the flaps, if you look at the flaps of the harness, the left flap is the top one. So therefore I put the bungee on my left foot so I can extend the harness, then I would use my right foot to grab the edge of the, to grab the foot plate. And once you've got that heel, once you've got the heel on the foot plate, you're there. That's what the important bit is. Something you can do when you've got lots of height and space. Even though I've got a lot of gliders around, there's nobody right close to me. So you can actually practice getting in and out of the speed bag if you want. So here I'm, I'm out of the speed bag like so, and to get my foot in, that right foot works best. Wish I had the bungee on my left foot, but I don't. Then, left foot in, nicely into the speed bag. There we go. And then, if I want to come into top land, you can practice this. So, open the knees, make a gap, put your left foot out, and it's the foot that, whichever side that the top flap of the speed bag is on. Then, get that foot out. Then take your other foot all the way out, but keep your, keep your left foot, in this case, still on the, on the footboard, so you can support your weight. And then as you come into land, you can just touch down. Of course, you can just step straight off the foot plate, so there's no problem with having your foot still half on the foot plate. Getting into the Genie X-Lite isn't as simple as I'd like. There should be a bungee on the harness, make it easier. Yeah. So, well, as you saw on the launch there, that wasn't very good. I really struggled to get uh, my feet into the speed bag. Probably the worst I've had in a harness for quite some time. And I have found this harness not very easy to get your feet into. And I'm pretty sure there's no provision. Maybe I'm, you could definitely add a, yeah, there's no obvious, well, it certainly doesn't come with a bungee with it, or we didn't get it with a bungee. But um, yeah, it certainly would benefit from it. Yeah, I'd still say my vote to all harness manufacturers for pods, pod harness manufacturers is just include a nice bungee on there, such a small thing, and just include it with a harness. And then pilots can choose to use it or not. Even though I generally find it really easy getting into speed bags, I think I would very often use the, the bungee anyway, just because kind of why not? <laughs> just want to make clear, I don't want to overstate it for this harness, that was just, that happened there, but that's actually the case for many 
or some other part harnesses. Now that I'm in the harness, I think part of what exacerbated the difficulty of getting back in the harness there was that I've put quite a lot of stuff in the back in the back pocket and it's, so it's quite full and that is something else I want to comment on on the design is that the some part harnesses are designed so if you you can only fill the back pocket so much and it doesn't affect the comfort of the harness but actually many harnesses that's not the case and, and that's certainly the case with this harness I can really tell because I've overfilled the back and even though I really tried to move everything around which I'm still trying to do now to get it more comfortable it's pushed me forward in the seat so my sitting area has got smaller and that has quite significantly reduced the comfort of the harness on that note I find the comfort of the, the Genie Light Gen Genie X Light uh, pretty good yeah generally I find it pretty good and I don't think it's the most comfortable of the lighter pods out there for me at least I can only talk about myself but also generally actually more than just myself I can talk about just the way that it feels and there definitely are slight pressure points you can feel the changes where the harness goes from from flat to angled around your back made worse by the fact that I've slightly overstuffed the back pocket quite rolly the Genie X Lite I've come to realise it's quite a rolly harness definitely not a stable harness more on the weight shifty on the weight shifty side it's definitely quite weight shifty in its movements I feel like what I'm trying to search up bits of lift with it I have to kind of I find I'm like I'm slightly on an edge almost like I kind of go one way or the other way quite easily yeah this combination with the the Ginivora and the Genie X Lite harness does lead to a quite nicely agile package. The comfort of the harness going carrying on up from under my bottom up my back. I'm flying in the medium size, which for most harnesses I am a medium, but um, because I've got quite a long back, I tend to sometimes be between sizes and mediums and larges. And on this harness I definitely feel that the support is quite low on my back. In terms of my back support, it feels like I could do with the larger size. But having sat in the larger size, that then feels a bit big. The hang points ends up being a bit high to the detriment of handling. So I feel like this is the better size for me. But this is an example of where, due to my dimensions, I'm a little bit between sizes on this model. But I'm very used to testing lots of different harnesses. I've tested, I don't know, hundreds of them over the years. And so I'm used to flying them and, and I purposefully fly them in different sizes sometimes to get an idea of sizing. And that's mainly and well, almost completely to do with so that I can better advise our customers on what's the right size for them. Another point I want to comment on here, so I just have to kind of do something about, is the flight deck has this, to be frank, rather crappy little plastic buckle, like a, a little a clip. It's not actually a buckle. It should be a buckle, but I, I have no idea why, but Jin have decided to put a little buckle that a little clip that goes over the, the waist strap. I'll try and show it to you. Wait a minute, let's move this up. Yeah, they've got this little plastic buckle and it takes very little to just knock it off. It just comes off when you launch. It's actually whenever I launch, it always comes off. So then I'm left with having to do this in flight, uh, which I don't like much. 
and then it only stays on I mean it usually stays on during flight but because I like to throw the glider around a little bit then I found it actually just pop falling off again and having to put it back on which is a bit annoying the flight deck itself as you can see sits in a pretty good position it's nicely centralized reasonably so which is better than for the genie so the gin genie light two is very off center and the genie light one even more so um, and that's yeah that's more central sits there it does kind of sit and hang down a little bit below the waist strap which means you do really want the clip you want something to hold it up to stop it going underneath the, the waist strap and hiding your instruments so that makes the the lack of buckle there even a bit more frustrating for me another thing the shoulder straps I found if you don't do up the waist strap they just really come off very easily so this chest strap is really essential to keep these on I found and again I'm not exactly sure why but Jin have decided to rather than using the straps themselves for the adjustment they've stitched on extra of these red straps on top of the straps and that's what you use to adjust which works just looks rather untidy in my opinion but with that chest strap done up oh, with the chest strap done up I found that the shoulder straps seem to sit on sit on quite well and not be a problem but if I undo that they certainly just fall off all the time and when I'm when you're clipping in the harness that definitely happens I found that if I don't do up that strap if I put the shoulder straps on and I'm trying to clip in and the shoulder straps keep falling off it makes it a bit of a fiddle getting the harness on so I found it a good idea put the shoulder straps on do up the chest strap and then that holds thing in place better what else uh, let's talk about the feeling in flight and today is a very good test as I've had on other days flying with the Genie X Lite in terms of its feeling and its handling it's actually quite a weight shifty harness so I'll try and demonstrate a bit in a moment when I come round but the movement and the weight shift is actually quite loose so quite weight shifty and there's not a lot of sort of limit to it very different different for example to say the sup air delight three and two three and four where they have movement in the first part and then it limits more there's a bit of that on the genie x light but not a lot so it's quite a weight shifty harness so i think this harness is the feeling of this harness is definitely going to favor those who want a harness that's more weight shifty and a bit to be honest a little bit on the sporty side so an active air you, with this harness you notice that you're being moved around more than a more stable harness for example the sup air delight 4 and even if I compare it to sup in the sup air range just because I'm that comes to mind um, even the ultralight sup air harness the strike 2 is more stable than this it's actually quite similar to the Gin Genie Light 3 which also when I first flew that when it first came out also surprised me that it is quite a weight shifty harness So pilots who want something quite weight shifty and active and say particularly like wanging the glider around and that sort of thing I think we'll really like that aspect of the Genie X Lite very very similar to the heavier it's heavier breath than the Genie Lite 3 but pilots are a bit more nervous and who want something more stable particularly if they're flying a wing that they're a bit more nervous on or if they're just a bit more nervous in general and let's face it 
Paragliding is a dangerous sport, so being a bit nervous is not a bad thing. Nothing wrong with being a bit nervous, I'm cautious. But yeah, so if you're that kind of pilot, then you'll, you might find the feeling of the, the Genie X Lite a little bit on the active side for you. And I have, we have had a number of pilots, some other pilots who've got the Genie X Lite, also the Genie, Gen Genie Lite 3, have commented the same. They found the harness more on the weight shifty side. Some saying they really like it and those are the pilots who like wanging things around more and others saying they found it a bit much. What should we move on to next? Actually the feeling on the positive side for the Genie X Lite, the feeling in the pod when you haven't overstuffed the back, it's got a pretty good feeling on the legs and the support and the material despite being a bit on the lighter side you should comment that considering that's called the Genie X Lite it's not actually that light if you compare it to other ultralight pods then it's a it's on the heavy side it's the weight of it is more similar to the other semi-light pod harnesses and the Genie Lite 3 despite again its name light isn't really that light at compared to the others and it's more of a sort of mid-weight harness. Check my airspace. Up, round we go, round and round. But you can definitely feel this here as I'm going around in this thermal. The Genie X lights, weight shift, it's quite weight shifty and that definitely helps with the wing. Yeah, here's an example of it. When I'm, I'm coming out of this thermal and because of the weight shiftiness of this harness, it's a little bit like it's got a bit of a tipping point. So if I, if I sit right absolutely in the middle, it's fine, but it's quite easy to change that point. There's very little resistance to that. Now, what I found is that when the conditions are weak, and require more sensitivity to work that works that works in your favor it's very nice but yeah when the conditions are more sporty and boisterous then that works a bit against you because you're it's very easy to get pushed to one side or the other and get bounced around for those looking for something more reassuring and stable i think they might find it a little bit much in sporty conditions. Other features, the flight deck for a relatively light harness is, is pretty good. And the storage is quite good. I think it's not very big, but it's certainly adequate. It's not adequate if you're going to carry lots of stuff for Volbiv, I don't think. Um, it's kind of a normal average kind of amount of storage, not a large amount of storage that you'd need for a, a Volbiv kind of adventure. Whoa. 